Hey everyone, I'm Melissa, and like many of you, I was bitten hard by the shopping bug. I would buy things just because they were on sale or if I was just vaguely interested in it. But when I left my corporate job and started working and traveling as a model, I spent months away from my overflowing wardrobe living from just a modest suitcase. And it was like this weight just fell away. I still had to dress well, it was part of the job. But stripped down to just the essentials, I realized I was dressing better than ever before. Because every single day, I was wearing things I felt good in and were flattering to my body type. I had only what I needed, nothing more, in my accidental capsule wardrobe. And that's when I realized shopping more doesn't necessarily help me dress better. Now we know that social media has accelerated the rise of the ultra-fast fashion industry with hundreds, even thousands of designs released every single day just from a single brand. But the moment we see a trend, it's already on its way out to make way for the next. We can talk all day about the data behind fast fashion's impact to our planet, its people and all living things and how it needs to stop. But what is a little more challenging to capture in numbers is how it affects our own relationship with fashion. We are confused. Ever see past photos of yourself and think, ugh, why did I wear that? Trends lead to a lot of fashion mistakes. When external factors like the media and social media influence what we buy, it can be harder to figure out what we actually enjoy wearing or what works for our body types and taste. Personally, it took me years longer to figure out my own sense of style. If I do succumb to a trend, I find I regret it pretty quickly just weeks later when it passes. These impulse buys never truly worked for us and they don't have longevity in our closets once those external influences move on. Unfortunately, they move on even faster than before, which is why we are disconnected. Do you remember your favorite piece of clothing growing up? Maybe it was a sweater you wore all the time or a jacket you picked up with your mom. The pieces we brought into our lives back then were distinct, when production and consumption was a lot slower. They were imbued with memories and meaning. Now, we struggle to remember all the pieces we own because there's just too many and they don't stick around for long. And that taught me to not appreciate the clothing I have. When fashion became cheap, plentiful and treated as disposable, we tend not to value the people and resources behind each garment. We might even find it harder to develop a sense of connection or appreciation for any garment, no matter how well it was made. Novelty reigns instead, and when the novelty of a piece wears off, we lose interest. While awareness for sustainability in fashion is rising and secondhand is definitely better than buying fast fashion new, secondhand fashion can accidentally perpetuate that same appetite for cheap, short-term use fashion. Their price tags are lower, it's abundant, and thrift hauls are definitely a thing. And the misconception that the secondhand market will just find a way to reuse a garment reinforces the behavior to consume at the same rate and just donate them after. Let's also not forget that fast fashion erodes culture and identity. Fashion used to represent where we came from and the cultural roots of the people who wear them. Now, people across the world wear very similar things. Social media and marketing has given us templates to fit into and all that cultural diversity has largely been replaced by homogeneity. When we look at style icons like Audrey Hepburn, Princess Diana, even through decades and trends, their style is distinct, an extension of their personality. So how can we slow fashion consumption, deepen our relationship with fashion, and come out even more fashionable in the age of social media while diluting its temptation? Here's what I did that really helped me. Get to know thyself. Audit your wardrobe, but not to declutter. When I first quit fast fashion six years ago, my first wardrobe audit found 36 long pants and jeans accumulated over a decade, and I didn't like almost all of them. I realized we buy duplicates of the things we already own, and we also make the same wardrobe mistakes again and again. An audit helps us understand what's crammed into our closets. So I pull them all out, I group them up, 
and then I notice the types of styles, colors, numbers of pieces, and reflect and ask questions like, does this suit me? Would I buy it again? And does it fit into my lifestyle? This process helps me detect patterns and avoid repeating past purchasing mistakes and bring out the hidden potential of my current wardrobe. Next is to set boundaries and challenge yourself. We sometimes think education, awareness, and the hard dirty facts about fast fashion will change our behavior. And it can in many cases. Or we can get desensitized. I find we can transcend the need for these impact reminders through lived experiences that bakes in healthier fashion habits and develops our internal motivation. Here's where setting boundaries for myself has been very helpful. Boundaries are a good thing. They give us a chance to discover what lies beyond consumption. Try a buy nothing year or a buy nothing new year. That's where I started when I first quit fast fashion. I re-loved my wardrobe, borrowed, thrifted, swapped, and I just never stopped because I exercised the creative muscle instead. I like to set challenges for myself. From the wardrobe audit, I'll pull out all the stuff I never wear, and every day for a month, I would style outfits from pieces I haven't worn in a long time. I discovered so many great outfits this way, and they were hidden in my wardrobe. If a piece really doesn't work, I at least gave it a chance and put in the effort to work through it instead of just swiftly decluttering and shopping even more. I also like to challenge myself to put full looks together in a swap or a thrift store, and I don't even necessarily have to bring any of them home. Reloving clothing, both our own and secondhand, trains us to see the potential in a piece because it doesn't come in a ready-made template that a brand sells us in a lookbook. And these challenges train me to style harder rather than shop harder and be more resourceful with what is available. In the end, fashion isn't about consumption. It's about expression, function, creativity, and so much more. Enjoying these alternative avenues can help expand those facets for us. It can help us break unhealthy shopping patterns, encourage us to explore different styles we've never even considered, and experiment without causing more harm to the world around us. After I quit fast fashion, colors started coming into my life because whatever piece I picked up in a thrift store, it was the only one. If it came in five other different colors, I would have reverted back to black. After six years of quitting fast fashion and buying nothing new, I find my looks more cohesive, more me, and I feel more confident and connected in my style and fashion choices. My outfits tell a story, and I find myself relating better to people on social media through these stories, instead of being yet another ad. When it comes to being more sustainable with fashion, we might hear words like avoid, reduce, quit, and think, I'm losing out. But in truth, what we're really doing is avoiding creating clothing that never should have existed in the first place. Things we don't really like or aren't very useful beyond just the moment. It's removing the unnecessary. And I promise you, in return, we gain so much more. 